Two Day Crew, welcome back. We're at Isleworth Driving Test Centre where we're going to show you another route. We're joined by myself, Scott, and Stiggy. Yep, hi. <laughs> and we're going to show you a route that's not as common, okay? This is obviously going to involve the dreaded dual carriageway roundabouts, a few pigeons that might try to commit suicide. Uh, no, I take that back. The pigeon the isn't the pigeon trying to do that. Wins. The pigeon always wins. Yep. Love it. Thank you very much. Yes, pigeons, uh, a little bit of information here. See, uh, faster than human beings, therefore they think that we're traveling in slow motion. And that's why they're so brave. But like Stiggy said, the pigeon always wins. Right, now we're on the dreaded, horrible road that is super narrow with parked cars on both sides. Very hard visibility here at this mini roundabout. Make sure you slow down, have a good lean and look over into the right-hand side so that you know there's no traffic coming. Showing your examiner, you're doing your observations, which again is the number one reason why people fail their driving tests for like 10 years in a row. So we've got less space, less space, less space, less speed less whatever Sticky said, which I can't remember because there's too many words for my small, tiny peanut brain, um, then yes, you just want to slow down. Okay, so take this road nice and gentle. Uh, don't worry too much about the 30 mile an hour speed limit. Oh, it's not speed. really safe. Oh, we've got the bicycle again. Oh, this guy? The park vehicle or oh, the, the bicycle? bicycle? Okay, so some of these park vehicles on this road are very large. They really stick out. You'll have a small vehicle parked and a large vehicle parked. Some people don't see the large vehicle. They stay on the same line that they're on and they end up getting too close to the parked cars. This is, again, a big reason why people will fail the driving test on these smaller roads, meeting situations. Just take it nice and slow. At the roundabout, I believe we're going straight as there's no signal from stick. You are allowed to go slightly on this white circle. We probably went almost about three quarters of our car on that circle to avoid the bicycle, to avoid the pavement. So if you feel it's necessary to avoid hitting the pavement or any other hazards, then you're allowed to go slightly on the circle or over road markings to avoid an accident, okay? Um, so we've got nice new road markings here. It's quite nice, nice and bright. Um, obviously with these speed bumps, again, I wouldn't go over 20 miles an hour just because of the bumps, but we are on one of those rare roads where it's a 30 mile an hour with speed bumps. This isn't common. Usually all roads with speed bumps will be 20. 20 is plenty for speed bumps, especially because you might damage the vehicle going over them any quicker. Obviously, it depends on what vehicle you're driving, but if you're driving one of our cars, which are lowered, then it can scratch sometimes or bottom out. Okay, we're going straight across the roundabout here. It's a very, very open junction there. Plenty of visibility to the front so we can see that oncoming traffic. There is no immediate road on the right when we reach that roundabout. Therefore, the next road we give priority to is the oncoming side, okay? So we work our way from the right. Anyone on this right side is priority. Okay, so we're at the traffic lights, which we were at on our previous video where you saw two cars go into the oncoming lane here. I don't know why, because... You're not really going to get anywhere. It's, it's pretty close to the actual traffic light itself. However, like I said, don't follow, or Stiggy said, don't follow other people. So make sure you know that this is the lane you need to be in so that you're confident. There is a keep clear zone in front of us, which is probably quite important to mention. So you might see that the two vehicles in front of us, the white and gray color car, and just a gray color car now, is actually on top of the keep clear zone. This is an immediate fail for road markings. I'm not too sure if that would be still considered at that junction, but let's not take the risk, okay? So if you see road markings saying keep clear, do not stop on the writing. That zone is marked out by a solid line at the top of the keep and another solid line at the bottom of the clear. That is the zone. So as long as you don't stop within that zone, you're all good. It's exactly like sort of a yellow box junction as an example. You don't really want to stop on top of a yellow box junction unless you're turning right and your exit's clear. Look at the zebra pro uh, crossing here. We've got a few pedestrians nearby. May, may or may not use the crossing. Look at body language. Read, you know, the twist of the body, the speed that they're walking. I don't need to explain it. We all know if we're kind of predicting someone's going somewhere. Use that to your advantage 
and uh, just show your examiner that you've noticed the zebra crossing by maybe just holding your speed or slightly adjusting your speed by slowing down a little, like Stig's doing here. I mean, there was a man there, but we're slowing down for the traffic, but look, we've seen the crossing. It's absolutely clear, no one there, so we can start to speed up. But sometimes, if you're not too sure, slowing down is a good, uh, safe way of approaching a zebra crossing, especially, and this is a huge area that will come up at some point on your driving experience. Uh, there's a huge queue of oncoming traffic, and there's a zebra crossing in the middle of the road. The pedestrians are crossing through the huge queue of oncoming traffic. You come to the zebra crossing, drive straight through because you don't see anybody behind the obstructions, the oncoming traffic. They walk out, you drive through. It is a super scary situation to be in. Don't let it happen to you. Anticipate it with this knowledge. Therefore, you'll be looking through the oncoming traffic, trying to see through the windows, under, over the vehicles, all of this to your advantage, preparing and anticipating to come to a stop at the zebra crossing if there is a pedestrian there using it. We're keeping one meter from the left, Stiggy's slowing down, he's noticed the bus's signal, he's checked his mirrors, he's moved himself over into this left lane because no directions are given, you follow the road ahead. So your examiner will normally start your driving test by saying this. Just a this. quick thing here. Yes, Stig. You see this traffic light says red? It does. The one behind is green. Oh. Don't get confused with the two. Mm. Lots now, of failure because of that. Lots of people that will no, not look, see the second see? traffic light. Now the second traffic light's turned red. Yep. So sometimes it'll be green, it might be red. There's a yep. solid line there. You There's a solid read. line there. Good. That's what I was going to add. So we know they're two separate junctions because there's two separate solid yeah, lines. Here's a good example. Okay. They changed, okay. It. They changed yeah. it at the same time. But if this one's still red, we stop here at the solid line because we know it's a stop line, it's a solid line. We know that traffic light's enforcing us to stop well, at that line. Just like this one. So there's a solid line, obviously, traffic light there. We know where to stop and wait. Self-explanatory. Very good. Thank you, Stig, for bringing that up. Because, yes, like, a lot of people get caught out by that. They and look at the wrong set of lights. Yeah. Also, what I saw was the filters on the light. For yeah, the people, green. They weren't there, so people will see the green light and they just drive through. Yeah. They're so not, that's the... They're not focused on the red one. Yeah. They're focused on the green one. So that's, that's something that you need to know about. So Turning if you left. can see that traffic light... Um, Turning this road is particularly tricky. Slowly, you can't see into this road. This is Wood Lane. And then we have a level crossing. Uh, this is a very busy junction, actually. This is quite commonly down like this. Most of the time, I, I'd say about 50% of the time I come through here, this crossing is down. For me, it's 100%. For you, it's 100%, yeah? <laughs> Okay, well, there we go. So we've got a train going by now. Um, sometimes there's two trains going by, so we might still be waiting after this train's passed. So well, let's see what happens now. Give it about five, ten seconds. Oh, brilliant. We got lucky. All right, so uh, what's quite nice on the new cars is they've got stop-start technology. So when the car comes to a stop, the engine switches off. That's something that's a little bit of a side no note you don't have to do on your driving test, but you'll commonly see signs there. So if you're waiting for a zebra crossing uh, or a level crossing, rather, uh, turning your engine off can be something that is enforced in certain areas. So look for signs. And if you are considerate enough to, you know, appreciate that, then switch your engine off, please. That's what Stick did there. So if you have nice, nice ears... You might have heard that. Okay, so we're on the side road here, turning off of Wood Lane down a residential road, which is quite common for people to be asked to do a manoeuvre. Stig, you know what? Because you do it so quickly, pull over and stop on the right where it's safe and convenient, please. So Stig's on early mirrors, early signal. He's choosing a very la a late, far away parking space, so he's got a nice smooth angle. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Stig. I'm not going to ask you to reverse back in a straight line, which your examiner would do. Uh, unless you really want to, Stig. Just a little too. Yep. When you pull up on the right, yep. don't go too close to the curb. Yep. Because when you reverse, it's yep. difficult for you to get away from the curb. Back, yeah. You know? So Should we... we leave at least a, a foot yep. from the curb. Okay. Can we show the viewers that? Yep. We can yep. All right. So we're going to show you, ladies and gentlemen, what Stig is talking about. Uh, if you could just do the reverse back in a straight line for me, please, Stig. 
So that is, what, yeah, about a foot? Yeah. So we're too close. But it's fine for me. You just hold your sewing slightly to the left. Yep. And as you reverse, you'll find that you'll get away from the curve. You see, it's a very slight, slight amount of angle, steering. So you don't get too far into the middle of the road. Yeah, and you can see that. You keep doing your that. observations as you're reversing. Mm, yeah, because you've you got this see. pedestrian here. So you'd no, have to stop for her, like wouldn't you? Stop, yeah. yeah. In case you walk in front of you or behind you. All okay. right. Right, now we're going to check again. You're going to check again, so all round observations. Right. Now you can see the gaps nice and. Yeah. Just by me holding the steering slightly to the left. Okay, there's a car on my right. Yeah, so you'd my, stop for that here. vehicle as yeah. well. So that's why the observations are so important. Before we move. Yep. We're going to go two car lengths back. But okay. In this case, we're going to go just past the drive, the driveway. Yep. Which will be slightly more. Okay. Yep. That's okay, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Now we'll stop. Yep. Put your drive to your observations. Yep. And then drive off. All be right. Careful about here. That situation. Yep. So the car that was moving so off. So you need to look at the cars on the left as well. In case they move away, as you move. Ta-da! So there you go. So the nice thing about this vehicle is we have that camera and what that's doing is showing you where your steering is, where the curb is, where your car is, so that you can adjust this and be, you know, very confident in knowing where your vehicle is in relation to the pavement. It also helps you to see a little bit behind you, but it's super important you do the observations which we were talking about. So you must look all the way around the vehicle over your left and right shoulder for pedestrians and traffic, which we had conveniently uh, while we were doing the maneuver. So you could actually see the situations we're referring to. We're at the crossroads here. We're going to be doing a right turn. Stig's seen traffic here on the main road. So he's come to a stop, allowed the traffic to actually commit to the turn. So that's why he didn't see the vehicle because it actually just turned into the road we came out of. But Stig's doing that correct procedure again, waiting until he knows that the vehicle's really turning before joining the new road. Okay, Stig gave plenty of room there for the oncoming traffic, which is quite nice because he had the space to give. So you can drive over into these parking bays here if you need to give space so look this is a good situation got the pedestrian driving over into the parking bay obviously to give space for the pedestrian also okay from yeah someone could walk out it's very common where you get these highway maintenance or some kind of building construction you have these vehicles and the person that's operating the vehicle or other people around may step out around this vehicle because they're kind of working so do obviously look to see under the vehicle if you can see any feet this is people may laugh about this but it's quite easy to see under a vehicle if you're looking early enough this and you'll see the feet oh this junction is taking us over the a4 stick we're coming out of this road where are you going to go next left and straight ahead. so he's going to go left and straight ahead now sometimes can you be asked to turn right in this junction no no okay so, so you're not sometimes you can be asked to go left okay or straight ahead okay? all right well done stick what does a yellow light mean? It means get ready to stop. Excellent, good. And that's what the examiners will ask you at the end of your driving test if you go through a yellow light like the one we just had. It was safe and it was enough distance for, for Stig to come to a slow, smooth stop, okay? So we mustn't run that because if it turns red when you get there, it's a very risky situation, not safe. So we must make sure that we stop you know, safely at yellow lights, before okay? The before well. the line as well, not in the bicycle box if, if there is the one. Line, yeah. If you cross the line, just it's, go. Yeah, if you've crossed the stop line, then you've crossed the traffic light where the traffic light is kind of enforced. So then just keep going, commit to your turn. Try not to do any emergency stopping. That means slamming your brakes on, skidding down the road, because if you haven't checked to see who's behind you, which you do need to check before braking, then you know there's going to be an accident back here. So you must, you know, Avoid emergency stopping and check your internal mirror before you make the decision for braking, which is called doing. yep, which is called change of speed. So Stiggy was just referring to the ambulance there. He said he's not going to move until he knows what the ambulance is doing. Stig's doing a really good job here. I wish you could see how he checked his mirrors for change of direction. So we were in the left lane as he went straight across a huge crossroads across the A4 there, and Stig was merging out into the right-hand lane because of the parked vehicles. 
Really good observations here on the right hand side at the first mini roundabout. We haven't been given any directions, so you're following the road ahead like the examiners would generally mention at the beginning of your test. No directions given, follow the road ahead. Stiggy's using the blocker cars, so again, no 360 camera on this video, but go check out the playlist for mock tests. You'll see the 360 camera where I can actually show you what Stig can see to the right. Um, if you want to, you can actually probably uh, request a link to the video VR film I've made where you can actually put on your VR headset and look around like you are the driver. Um, so these things are teaching aids. If it's something you're interested in, then let me know. Now Stiggy's watching this zebra crossing here because the pedestrians are extremely close. He's reading the body language, but what's really nice is what I mentioned earlier about the zebra crossings. He's noticed that it's a potential risk and he's started to address his speed by slowing down the vehicle, checking the interior mirror, changing your speed, slowing down to show the examiner or just to be a safe driver in general, but to show the examiner that you have noticed the pedestrians, the risk that they could use the crossing this and you're adjusting your speed. Is 20. Yes. Although the car yes. is showing you 30. Yes. So you've got to observe the 20 speed. Yes. So the technology in our vehicle is telling us it's a 30 road. You might have a Tom Tom or sat nav on on your driving test, which examiners will bring and place in the dashboard in front of you. Now, this technology may tell you uh, there's going to be a nice turn down here. So we're turning left on this roundabout. Clear, we can go. Your examiners may tell you, although they... I don't think they do this so much anymore, um, that the sat-nav may be incorrect, so like the car may be incorrect, so you must continue to keep looking for signs so that you know as a responsible driver not, what not, speed limit is. Not many driving school cars have the technology. We are, we are, we are the lucky ones who have the technology. Okay. I so, don't trust it. Yes, so with all technology, you know, try not to rely on it 100%. So we passed the road back there, Wood Lane. I thought we might be going there from my knowledge. Uh, I know there's another route down here. So we're going to be following this road, and it's all still... Ah, oh, hay fever's kicking in. 20 mm -hmm. miles an hour. Oh, my God. Yeah. You no, it's in the back. All right, so 20 mile an hour road, painful, a bit like hay fever, it's a nuisance, but it's there for a reason, obviously, so we must comply. If we go over 20, our watch speed stick, uh, stick speed. <laughs> and um, if he goes over 20, you're gonna hear it, because it's gonna go ding dong, and that is another thing that Stig was saying. So it's only so far certain vehicles. Um, we only use this vehicle, which is the A-Class, new A-Class. And it comes with this technology that shows you the speed of the road that you're driving on. And you can set the technology to give you a warning chime if you reach that speed. It is a lifesaver. I can't tell you how handy it is. Me and Stig uh, drive alone uh, with that technology still on as well. So it is something that we do use for our private driving also. All right, Stig's just taking it nice and easy now. 20 zones, although sometimes it can be hard to stay at 20, is a really good, nice kind of situation to have on your driving test. So I know quite a lot of driving test centers where it's predominantly 20. And if you think about it, you're doing 20 everywhere on your driving test, which is a slower speed than normal. This allows you more time and, you know, a slower speed to react to hazards. So it's a very good beneficial um, sort of circumstance or condition to be in for your driving test. So yeah, very clever of him. Yeah, so we've got roadworks. We've got to go around the roadworks, and then we've got a car here. Stig's doing really good. He's put his signal on. This is a good situation to signal for going around the obstacle, like the roadworks or whatever. So um, you would want to signal to show that driver that was parking 
blocking the road in front of Stig there that your intentions are to go around. So definitely a beneficial signal, really a place where you want to use it. Um, but generally, like I said earlier, I wouldn't encourage people to signal when they go around park vehicles or buses just because sometimes there might be a side road. And if that signal stays on, you can get a serious fault for signaling when it's not necessary. Look at this crossroads. It's not too busy, but we do have the motorbike. No oncoming traffic behind the motorbike, so therefore we can continue to turn. So have a look for oncoming traffic. I've had a student that's done that turn, had the oncoming traffic, and turned into the traffic. And the examiner had to slam the brakes on to stop an accident from happening there. I was sitting in the back of that exam, so I know that's exactly what happened. And it was a good thing that the examiner stopped the vehicle because there would have been an accident. So very important when you're doing a crossroads, you're turning right, you pay attention to the oncoming traffic because they have priority. If there's any traffic oncoming, you stop and wait in the middle of the crossroads. Usually two cars can wait in the middle if there aren't any road markings or signs. If it's a very large junction, so it's a huge crossroads, you might be able to fit more uh, vehicles in the middle, um, maybe three, four, five, depending how large the crossroads is. Okay, but a general rule, two cars, and you can apply that at Isleworth, I'd say, quite comfortably, all junctions, two cars. Yeah, remember to stay on the left of the dual carriageway. Okay, and when you're driving down a dual carriageway, which Stig has done, that's another. I had one gentleman, he failed his driving test just for this. He did not come back to the left lane like Stig mentioned. So very nice, good drive, examiner was happy. At the end of the test said, I'm sorry, you fell for normal driving position, which means you use the left lane when you're following a road. Okay, you use the right lanes for overtaking and turning right, and you use the left lane for what's called as normal driving. Okay. All right, we're at the traffic lights here. We're turning left. We've done our mirrors. We've done our signal. We're in the correct position we just talked about for our left turn. And now we're doing the follow the curb round to the left. And I know there's too many roundabouts coming new up road, here. New road, new mirrors. New road, new mirrors. This is a good one. It's something that's not mandatory, but it's a very, very good tip and technique to have when you're driving so that you know who's following or potentially trying to overtake. So we're not going to do the double roundabouts. We just did the single one here. But Eisenworth, the roundabouts behind us are double roundabout systems. And they're very close to each other. So what's quite common when people are doing double roundabouts is they don't see the second roundabout, they don't observe, and therefore they get a serious fault for observations. Stiggy's going straight, just checking the traffic to the right. It's a nice, good open junction. That's Position another mode. thing that's quite good about Isleworth. It's not too bad. The visibility is good. It's 20. Yes, the positioning, probably one of the downsides, but you can't you can't escape that. Any driving test center, you're going to have roads like this. Look how narrow it is. Oncoming car, you've got to worry about your position from the oncoming car. But at the same time, you've got to see your position from the park vehicles. We've got to maintain that safety bubble around the car so that no one side gets too close to any hazards. It's very important. And we've said this at the beginning of the video, and I forgot what Stiggy said, but I said less space, less speed. And Stiggy said... Less space, less speed. Okay, so it's the same. Okay, so it's probably the easiest way to remember it. Roundabout here, nice and gentle because you've got a twist in the road. Watch the signal on that car. Look how they pretty much drove the wrong way round the roundabout, completely cutting it. But Stig, as a responsible uh, road user or driver, he took the defensive action there. Although they're cutting the roundabout, going completely the wrong way round. He's seen the signal. He's taken into note that the steering's engaged. The wheels are turned. He knows what that vehicle is doing. Also the speed is another good way of maybe indicating where a vehicle might travel because the slower they're going the more likely they are to actually turn okay because it wouldn't be safe to do it the other way around you'd end up losing control of the vehicle and having an accident okay or the other one the smaller the gap slower the speed there we go. So that was the one I was trying to remember yeah too many words my my tiny peanut brain sorry about that stick smaller the gap smaller the brain smaller the speed Smaller the memory. <laughs> okay, so we're on a 20 mile an hour road. We've got it written all over the road. We don't have any signs, or at least no signs that I've seen, but I have seen it displayed in the road. 
Um, again, the, the car is showing us an incorrect speed, so it's saying 30, but it's quite clear to see it's 20. Good maintaining the door width from the parked cars as you've done this whole road. Well done, Stig. We had the roundabout where Stig's going straight. This is a closed junction. Stig's almost had to stop there to actually see oh, into the right. We're watching the body language from the, from the pedestrian there. They're facing us, looking at us, able-bodied mind. Feet are side by side. That means a person's stationary. Oh. Um, so that you know they're not in motion. If they're in motion, they're not going to be looking at you probably. They're going to be looking at their phone or something similar. And one leg's in front of the other, okay? Body language. At the end of the road, turn right, please, Stig. Now, this is a particularly tricky junction, especially if it's very busy. Um, you will need to take your time. And it's a large part of the road to actually cross over onto the other side of the road. So you must bear in mind the left side as much as the right side, because if you start to emerge out and you have traffic on the very far side of this road coming, you're not going to be able to complete your turn. So pick your opportunity. Like I said earlier, if you could walk out, you can drive out, wait at the edge of the junction until you have this opportunity. Now this bus lane has changed, which is actually to people's benefit if they're doing their driving test now at Isleworth, because you were allowed to previously use this bus lane, but now that is a no-no. You're not allowed to use this bus at, uh, bus lane at any time. So if you can read the sign, good st uh, checking through the traffic there on the right stick, because we might have had that pedestrian walk through the traffic and onto our side of the zebra crossing. Here we have at the end of the bus lane or end of bus lane. So we know where that blue sign is. Yep. We can start to move in. So Stick's doing his interior mirror, left mirror here, moving back across. He knows there's no buses, bicycles, etc., and he can move in. Talking about bicycles, there's a bicycle lane here. The lorry in front's doing a good job of keeping the bicycle lane clear. Stick's completely in the bicycle lane here, blocking all the bicycles. Naughty driver, Stick. Yeah, no. I'm just joking. He's completely out of the bus lane, uh, bike lane. Anyway, you can cross this bus lane. It's it's bike cycling, lane, yeah. Because it's a broken one. It's broken, yes. But providing... If it is a solid line... Yeah, you'd be you, in trouble. You would fail your turn. Uh, it's good to double check for bicycles, maybe just before you commit to the change of direction there on the turn. This roundabout, some people do end up going in the bus stop. You, like we said earlier, you don't need to go all the way around the circle just go slightly on the circle, keep your line nice and straight, and uh, that's safe. Because that's a bus stop. It's not a part of the road. It's where the bus is stopped. So you don't drive there unless you're a bus. Okay, so just nice and straight. Coming back towards the test center now, we're at the end of the route. So we're going to have this bridge here. We don't know what's on the other side of the hill. So we want to approach it with caution, being ready to stop. Just in case over that blind spot, the brow of the hill, we we see, uh, we don't see. And then when we come over, you know, could be anything we, we in the middle of the road. Bus. Say that again, please, we're Stick. Admit the bus over the hill. Yes, there you go. That's an excellent one. Very likely to happen. So buses are used in this road. Stick just mentioned we could have met the bus at the brow of the hill. Okay, so do take caution. Less you see, the less speed you want as well. So it's not only less space, less speed, it's less see, less speed. These are rules number one and two of learning to drive. Turning left on the roundabout, please, Stig. So he's examiner, Stig's examiner, that would be me, um, has told him to turn left, right? So he's put his left signal on because he heard me say left. Okay, so that's very important on your driving test. If your examiner says left, you signal left. If your examiner says right, you guessed it, you signal right. Now, this is the naughty road at the end and the beginning of your driving test center. And I'm not going to lie, even though I'm an experienced driver and I completely trust Stig's driving, there's a few situations on this left-hand side here where I'm going... <laughs> 
<laughs> make sure you know how far you are from this. I'm not talking to stick, I'm talking to camera. Okay, that you know how far you are from this left hand side. If you don't, you need to slow down because unless you slow down, you won't be able to see how close you are on the left side. So don't be worried about stopping. Stick had to stop there because there wasn't enough room. And if you're not sure and you get that anxiety feeling in the pit of your stomach, it's telling you to slow down. If you're not sure, stop. Yeah, when in doubt, don't. So Stiggy's just taking his time. He's maintaining a nice safe gap here from the left. Also giving, uh, giving enough safe gap there from the right-hand side oncoming traffic. So you can hear the warning chimes. Obviously, sticks reaching speed, slowing down again, so you know roughly how fast we're going. Straight on the roundabout, please, stick. He's looking at the signals. He's looking at the wheels. We have no wheels turned. We have no signals on. That means the vehicles are going to go straight. So it's safe for us to proceed. We're going to be turning right back into Fleming Way. We're back at the driving test center. Stiggy's okay to turn because he would walk across, he would drive across. Now take your time, Stig, because we don't know what's coming out of the entrance to the test center here. And we do have an oncoming vehicle. Now we might cause this oncoming vehicle to slow, stop or swerve. Although the vehicles chose to slow, stop or swerve by themselves, that way we can go. We haven't forced them. They've chose to stop for make, us. Make eye gives contact. us safe. Sorry, Stig. Make eye contact. Make eye go. contact. Before you move. Before you move. Okay, Stig. Just pulling into any bay. Don't worry about being perfect. This is the end of your test. You've done your maneuver. So we're not doing a perfect bay park here. We're just putting the car off the road, which is all the examiners want to now say, congratulations, you've passed your driving test. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. I've been Scott. You've been Stig. Stay safe. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time.